Alright, now in this video, I want to talk about ring final circuits. And whilst you may recognize this from BS7671 from the appendices, showing us the arrangement of the ring final, telling us that we shouldn't have a load in excess of 2 kilowatts on there, they should be there on their own dedicated radials, showing us that we can have fused spurs to any number of sockets that we want of any reduced size, showing us that we can have unfused spurs as long as they are to socket outlets of single or double and no more etc etc what i wanted to talk about is the arrangement of the sockets and how do we get to understand how much of a circuit is carried or how much of the current is shared on one leg of the ring final over another there's a little bit of a formula that we can play with that i do with what i do on design courses and stuff it's it's um what i wanted to cover in this video one of the first things we need to understand is what the regulations actually require. The regulations require, and this is dot uh, 204, 433.1.204. Uh, regulations require that the cable selected for the ring final shall have an IZ, so a current carrying capacity, no less than 20 amp at any point. So with whichever method of installation we choose to wire it, the IZ shall not be less than 20. And some of the wiring systems shown in BS7671, even for 2.5mm cables, will go below 20 amps. Do make sure your method of installation is suitable. I'm thinking reference method 103 right now in my head. So do make sure the method of installation achieves a current carrying capacity of 20 amp. And then what we need to make sure then is, as it says here, uh, yeah, for long periods. We need to make sure that the current on any one leg of that ring final does not go over 20 amp for it be considered a long period of time. Now, without an exact understanding of this, we normally would say a long period of time would be upwards of an hour because that's normally what we would say would be sufficient time for a conductor's operating temperature to be dictated by its load after a period of demand. So, this is saying don't go over 20 amp for a period of an hour or so. So we want to make sure that we understand what the loads are on the ring final and we need to make sure that we arrange the ring final so that any one leg of that ring final will not go over 20 amp for a sufficient period of time. So how do we understand what a period, sufficient period of time is? Well, let's, let's look at the electrician's design guides example of a kitchen. So this is the electrician's design guide, the IT's design guide. And I've used this in a similar scenario uh, when I do maximum demand. What this is illustrating is a typical example of a washing machine. Uh, let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. So <clears throat> here is a, here's a standard washing machine, two and a half kilowatt, 20 litre capacity, blah, 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 blah. And you can see we have the period of time there that the equipment is in operation, followed by the actual amperage used by the appliance. So you can see that it suggests that a washing machine has a period of half an hour with heating and washing, followed by a period of half an hour for a few amps, which is just washing and spinning, followed by a rinse, followed by another spin. And you can so you can see the main power there is the first half an hour with the heating of the water. That makes sense. We go over here to a tumble dryer, and you can see that a tumble dryer's job is to heat up, is to dry. So it's constantly pulling the full demand of 10 amp. Dishwasher, heating and washing, cool rinse, hot rinse. So when it heats the water up, it pulls the 10 amp. And for things like kettles and toasters, they are quite large, eight, six, for each appliance, but their duration of use is fairly negligible. Um, so what we want to do is we then look at this next drawing, and what this does is over the two hour period, it overlaps all of these appliances. So you can see in this model, we have half an hour of 30 amp demand, followed by half an hour of 10 or so demand, followed by another half an hour of 20 demand. We need to sometimes assess circuits for this scenario. Now, if we assessed 30 amp for half an hour, that technically wouldn't be over 20 amp for a long duration. It might not be that that duration is long enough. But we need to understand where the equipment is placed and how it is used, how much of the current is on the legs of the ring final. And to do that, I need to show you a formula. And let me just close this. And let me close, uh, let me get this up. 
and let me get this out. All right. So, <clears throat> the form we're going to use is off the top of my head um, the IA, which is the current of one leg of the ring, is equal to the returning or the rest of the ring's length, B, times the actual amount of load plugged into the socket at that point, which is the IL, over the whole length of the ring, which is the A plus the B. Now let me draw that as a quick scenario. So here is a, here is the consumer unit. Here is socket outlet one, socket outlet two, and socket outlet three. Or oh, let, let's actually make this easy. Let's call this one, this two, and this three. Fine. And from here, we have a cable going to there, and to there, and to there. And then the magic that makes it the ring final is it returns. Let's say that these are each 10 meters. Let's keep this first scenario fairly simple. So these legs are all 10 meters in length. Right, now, what we mean by an IA, let's change color now to green. If I put a load on here, that's gonna be the IL. The, the current, you know, the the uh, the load of the appliance. Now, some of that current is going to go this way to the board, and some of that current is going to go this way, and that is why we have to split this in two. So, if we were to call from this point, yeah, from this point in the board, if we were saying going from here this way is leg A. That means from this to the right, all the way around to the other side is all going to be B. Now I'm going to delete that in a minute just so it doesn't get too much. But we have an IL, which is the amount of load plugged in. Let's say that's a 10 amp load. Let's say it's the dishwasher that we saw a minute ago. We plug 10 amp into that. Some of that 10 amp is going to go this way. Yeah. And some of that 10 amp is going to go this way. So how can we quantify which one is which? That's what this formula does. So IA, which I want to measure, is the current going along leg A, that way. IB is the current that will go along leg B. And we'll calculate IB. I'll draw the other formula. Once I have IA, IB is then equal to the IL that was plugged into it minus the IA. In other words, it's the remainder. So that's fairly simple. So let's let's pump that into a calculation. So IA is equal to B. Now here is the length of B there. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm working on this socket. So B is 10 plus 10 plus 10. So IA is equal to 30 times the IL, which was, which is 10 amp over A plus B, which is the overall legs of the ring, which is the 10 and the 10 and the 10 plus the A length of 10, which is 40. So that's going to equal 300 over 40, which equals, get the calculator up, 300 over 40, seven and a half amp. Okay, so that tells me now that I have seven and a half amp flowing this way on the ring final when I plug 10 amp into this socket here. So if I have seven and a half amp flowing that way through IA, then I know that IB is equal to IL minus IA which is IL of 10 minus IA of 7.5, which it basically means I have two and a half amp flowing this way, the rest of the way around. Okay, so with that first socket outlet, let's put this up here. Um, socket outlet one, I have seven and a half and two and a half. 
that gives me an understanding on the current going one way and the current going the other way. Now let me now delete a little bit of this because we now want to move to socket outlet two. Now, if you look at socket outlet two, it should be fairly evident that you've got a five amp load because I'm going to say five amp like that, and that five amp load is going in equal directions. In other words, leg leg A and leg B are both 20 meters in length. So we should calculate that two and a half amp each way round. But let's let's verify that. Let's verify that now. So using this formula up here again, IA is equal to B times IL, or in this case, the B has changed. Let's just delete that. The B is now from here this way is B and A is now including that leg so you can see that A is 10 meters and 10 meters so A is 20 and B is 10 meters and 10 meters so going to the formula IA is equal to B so B is 20 meters times IL which is 5 over the overall which is still 40 that equals 100 over 40 which equals my I should really I should really know that one um, 100 over 40 yeah two and a half okay so we have two and a half amp flowing this way as IA and that means we have two and a half amp flowing this way as IB. So two and a half amp and two and a half amp in each leg for socket outlet two. Let's just delete some of this. Okay, we're now going to move it to socket outlet C. Let me get the blue up. Socket outlet three, sorry, this one. Get the blue up. And we'll plug into this one 10 amp again. So we're going to plug 10 amp into that. So in this case, B is just this 10 meter lit bit, but A is all of this there the 30 meter there so b is 10 meters times il of 10 meters over a plus b which is 40 meters which equals 100 over 40 which we just did as two and a half amp in the previous scenario that means there is two and a half amp flowing that way of that 10 amp in the circuit which means this way is the seven and a half amp so it's actually a flip of socket outlet one socket outlet three and one yeah well they are carrying the same current of equal distance from the board so they are sharing it but obviously setting it down different legs so with that in mind if i wanted to say right well how much current let's now go with a bit of green here if I wanted to say how much current then is just on this leg or how much current is just on this leg I can now calculate each leg so I can say that you know if I call this leg one I can say that with leg one there is current going from this socket that way this socket that way this socket that way yeah and so it's actually all of the i a currents i'm just writing this in the top here yeah this is the i a current and this is the i b current so if the current's going this way from the socket it's the i a current if the current's going this way from any socket it's the i b current so this leg is subjected to the load of this 
and the load of this, and the load of this. So IA for leg one is equal to 7.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5, which equals 12.5 amps. So there's 12.5 amps on that leg. How much is on this leg? Leg two. All right, well, leg two is gonna be subjected to the IB of that socket and the IA of that socket, because that current's gonna pull that way, but that current's gonna pull that way. So all I really change is the first value goes from 7.5 to 2.5. And then the other numbers are the same. So plus 2.5 plus 2.5. So the first 2.5 is this current pulling that way. This 2.5 is this current pulling that way because that one splits in half. This 2.5 is the fact that this socket here, the 10 amp, is only allowing two and a half amp to go this way. So this leg is subjected to those three currents, which is 7.5 amp. Now if we carry this on with legs three and four, it's going to repeat. So leg three, which is this one, it's going to be like leg two. So it's going to pull the I, A. It's going to go this one and this one. So that's going to be that pulling that way. It's going to be 2.5 and 2.5. But with this one, it's only going to take 2.5 that way. It's just 7.5. That makes sense. It's the same as that one. It's in the middle. Leg four is going to change as well because leg four is going to have the IB of that and the IB of that, but it's going to have the IA of this one here. Sorry, the IB of this one here. And so that's going to be 2.5 plus 2.5, but now it's going to be pulling the 7.5 that way because that's leg four. Okay, so it's got 7.5, it's got 2.5, it's got 2.5. Yeah, it's got all of that on it. There's no leg, there's no power there because there's nothing being pulled. So this leg, leg four, is having 7.5 amp pulled from this. It's having 2.5 amp pulled from this and 2.5 amp pulled from this. Which, like leg one, equals 12.5 amp. So in this simple, very, 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 very simple scenario, you can see that they are sharing 12 and a half amp on these two legs and seven and a half amp on these two legs. It's not too much of a problem. Let's complicate this slightly as we go to a more typical example of a ring final. 